Holy balls, look at that for a view. You can see right out to sea. Visibility is bang on that way. It's hard going, is this? To be fair. So off the bat, we're onto a winner here. Blue skies, snow capped mountains, lovely mountain valleys. That's what I'm talking about. That is just what you need to start the day. The sun is a blazing. The skies are looking clear. Visibility is looking pucker. And we've just bagged some free parking. I'm in the Langdale area. I was gonna park at the National Trust car park, but I'm hoping to be out for three days whilst keeping my car in the same place. So I didn't fancy paying for three days worth of parking, but I've managed to bag a nice little spot at the side of the road for free. Buzzing. So if you don't drive, this is actually a good area to come to. There's buses that run all the way along this road to the old Dungeon Gill. So all you'd have to do is get a train to Windermere and then work your way here from there. So I'm just passing the old Dungeon Gill Inn. Might have a scary name, but it's a friendly place and it's actually been serving fellow hikers since the 1800s. I'm about a mile and a half in so far. I'm just working my way through the Mickledon Valley and what a stunning place this is on a day like today. For the first few miles, the route is actually quite flat, but once I get to the end of this valley, I'm gonna be heading left up a steep ascent on a path next to Rosset Gill, all the way up to the first Wainwright of the day, Rosset Pike. You could actually have a sick camp in this valley. There's loads of flat spots to place the tent and the hike itself will be quite easy. I'm hoping to head up there, up on the tops. Where the hike itself won't be quite as easy, but the reward will be the snow and the views. Lovely little plunge pool there. Look how clear that water is. Right, so we're at this junction now, a bit of a crossroads. You can head that way if you're doing the Cumbria way, which is the way I went before, up to the Stake Pass. Or for the first time for me, I'm gonna be heading this way up towards S Course. I've been to S Course many times before, but only from the other side when I've been parked up at Seathwaite. And today we won't be heading that way. So we're at that point now where the calm, steady, relaxing walk has come to an end. It's been pretty much flat all the way up until this point. But if we're wanting to get up onto the top of them mountains, we're gonna have to put in some graft now. This is where the hard work starts. So the sun has just gone behind the clouds, which is actually pretty good for me because I'm getting pretty warm now we're hiking up this ascent. And we're not actually too far off the snow line. As you can see there, it's about halfway up this mountain. And with regards to the snow, we've actually had quite a lot recently with a lot more forecast for tonight. I've not brought the crampons with me because I've not brought the scarper boots with me. I have got the ice axe and I have brought the micro spikes. So hopefully that should be enough for this trip. This is Rosset Gill that runs alongside the path that I'm heading up. And I do believe that there could be Rosset Pike. Making some good progress now. The views are really starting to open up behind us. What a stunning day. So as we're making our way up onto the tops, I can start to feel that wind chill. So I'm expecting it to get a lot worse as soon as we get over this little crest. And speaking of wind, why do we? Seven o'clock tonight, it's forecast 60 miles per hour winds on the top of Borfell, which is gonna be the highest wind right back today. I am gonna drop a little bit lower just to be safe when it comes to setting up camp. But either way, man, 60 mile an hour, we're certainly gonna feel the effects of that wherever we camp. Proper 
a lot of wind on the land up here. A lot more snow than I thought, to be honest. So we've just got to Angle Tarn. But it's not the same Angle Tarn as in Angle Tarn Pikes that you can get to from the Patterdale area. But now I can see that, I've just realised I've actually gone a little bit too far and missed my turning. Oh, that wind chill, man. Well, I don't know when last time someone came up here. It can't be too recent because there's no bloody footprints. Always makes it a little bit harder when it's in the snow and you're sliding about. Lovely day though. No complaints from me. So here we are at two. Whoa. So here we are at 2136 feet, the first worm right of the day, Rosset Pike. We're 3.8 miles into the hike. So steady going so far. Next destination, bigger than this one, is Bofell. And from up here, you can see back down into Angle Tarn. We've got Bofell on the left hand side, Est Pike straight down the middle, Allen Crags, and then over to the right, Glaramara. Now these two guys down here look like they did exactly what I did. They walked past the path because you can't see it because of all the snow. And then they've just come back on themselves and they're heading this way. So now we're down to the level where Angle Tarn is. The wind has really dropped off. So that would be a good potential place to pitch tonight. However, I'm hoping to do about six miles today. So I am going to go up onto Bofell, bag that one, even though I've already done it, and then drop down to Free Tarns, a place that I've not been to before, and I might have to pitch up there. I'm going to see how sheltered it is. Hopefully I can get the tent in a good flat spot, and we'll just nestle down there for night. So, it's hard going is this, to be fair. I'm not liking how gloomy these clouds are looking, I've just come into view. Hopefully they just fly straight past. Right, I've actually found this little rock, so I'm going to sling my bag off and get my waterproof jacket on, just to act as a bit of a windbreak. Well, that's much better protection from the wind. And it looks like the sun's coming out. Just need these clouds to pass now. I think I underestimated how much snow there were gonna be in Lake District. You can see by the footprints with this circle. Well, that's definitely a crampon. You can see it there as well. And the snow seems far too sticky for the micro spikes. It'll all just ball up underneath. Holy balls, look at that for a view. You can see right out to sea. Visibility is bang on that way. I'm actually only a mile away from where I plan to camp at the Free Tarns. I've just got to get up to Bofell first and then drop down from there. The last time I came up Bofell, I had zero views whatsoever. I couldn't see anything from the top. So hopefully this cloud backs off till we at least get up there and I can see the views. And you just follow it around here, across there and up there. And then we'll drop back down over the top to three times. Hopefully, see that view. And then I don't care how early it is, as long as nobody else is already pitched up there, I'm gonna get my tent up straight away, get it hunkered down the best I can, and wait for this heavy wind later on. So we've got the beautiful clear views that way, but then turn to the left. Those clouds are looking mean. <sighs> So from here we can actually see Great and Green Gable there and then you've got Esk Pike there, behind that will be Great End and then we've got Ill Crag, Broad Crag, Scarfell Pike and Scarfell. This last little section up to the top of Bofell.
I've now got to the summit of Bow Fell. I've just had to crouch down behind this rock because the wind speed is actually pretty high up here. I've had to draw for ice axe for this section because the surface is just very smooth snow and you don't want a trip to become a fall. So safety first, just in case. I was hoping there was going to be nobody else here, but it looks like there is. All right, fella. So this is one of the three tarns and I'm actually in a sheltered spot here. The wind is coming from southeast, which is directly that way behind these little rocks. So ideally, I'll find somewhere round here. So if the wind is coming from that direction, I'm going to head in that direction and try to find a flat spot behind one of these big boulders. So this is a spot that I just cleared for a potential pitch, but it's really boggy and it's just a load of rock. But we just keep searching, there's always a pitch. It looks like there's a little wall there, so I'm going to check that out. This has potential, a lot of potential. So it does seem like a sheltered spot to be fair. We've got that big ass boulder there. We've got this little wall here, it's really low, so it's probably not gonna do a right lot. But we are in a bit of a ball, so it looks like we'll get some protection from that side, which is what we need. There should be enough room to just tuck in there nicely. Not a bad view, is it, out at door? You can see the Scarfell Pike summit platform right there. So this is view out at front door. Got a nice view of the Scarfells over there. And now I guess we just wait for those winds to arrive and when they do arrive, they're gonna come strong. 60 mile an hour on Bowfell. We're just below Bowfell, so we shouldn't get anywhere near that much, but there's no avoiding some of it. At the moment, you can hear it, it's picking up a little bit. There you go. It's hitting the foot end of the tent, which is the best end to hit, because it's the end that's most aerodynamic. We are in good, the pegs are in good. We should be fine. We'll hang on in there. So while we've still got plenty of light, I'll go through the absolute mountain of scran that I've brought with me. So I've got, Lancashire hot pot, beef stew with potatoes, Seabrook rings times two, Seabrook fries, and some frisps ready salted. Iron brew times two, ball noodle, best in the business, porridge, that's for breakfast, super noodles, salt and pepper chicken, Beautiful. And in here I've got crispy potato slices, love that. 
Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? Come on. Sorry, filming with one hand. And they are sweet chili salmon fillets. I am eating like a king, but there's a catch. I'm here for three days, so I've just got everything with me. So that's obviously three days worth of scram. So that's why I've got quite a lot. So I've got a bit of choice. Obviously I'm going to have the salmon and the crispy potatoes tonight. And then maybe the super noodles or the bowl noodle. Save that ration pack meal and the dehydrated meal for tomorrow, as well as the porridge for breakfast. And that's me sorted. Crisps are just for snacking. Iron brew, one for tonight, one for tomorrow night. A lot of this stuff's left over from Scotland. I can't have this Lancashire rock pot up Ben Nevis. So this has actually traveled higher than any other ration pack meal, obviously in the UK. And now it's here in the stunning Lake District. And how stunning it is. So I literally had a text earlier, uh, 23 minutes past three saying, welcome to the Isle of Man. You'll pay £2.29 per day to use your minutes. The Isle of Man is over there. I'm not on the Isle of Man. And then like two minutes later, I got another text saying, welcome home, we hope you had a great trip. <laughs> Better not have been charged for that. And then on this side, we've got my warm gloves, my Simmond Mountaineering gloves, mate. I've got my Alp kit Hunker XL bivvy. I seem to take that on every winter camp lately. And then this is actually a new air mat to try. Now let me make it clear, this is not gonna replace my Thermarest. If you want to spend big money on a mat, then Thermarest Neo Air X Lite is what I rate and that is what I probably will use. However, Flextail offered to send me this and it's actually got a higher R value, R5, than the X Lite has. So I thought because it's cheaper, some of you guys might not want to fork out on a firmer rest straight away. You might be just getting into camping, want to do a bit of winter camping. I thought I'll give it a good test, bring it out for two nights and just see how it gets on. See if it's comfy, see if the R value seems like it's true to its word, which I'm sure we'll find out. So I just thought I'd bring it along, actually test it, and then I can let you guys know whether it's worth buying or not. And I've managed to find some more munch. So I've got some fridge raiders, southern fried chicken bites, these are all right, these. I got them in the garage on the way here when I got a coffee. And I was supposed to have them, but I just forgot. Hmm. These are all right, these. They're not bad. Quarter to five, sunset is not for over an hour yet. Already lugged in bag. Just want to warm my feet up, man. I've got my down socks on and just put them in sleeping bag. Warm up in no time. But I'm just admiring the view, to be honest. Absolutely stunning. Cheers, mate. Cheers. I'm going to crack on doing part one of my salmon meal. Trust me, man. Cook them for long enough. Check them bad boys out. Nice and crispy. My salmon's been mashed up, man. It's been smashed in my bag. So it's like a bloody pancake. This is gonna be hard work, this. Oh, it's in though, it's in. Look what we're dealing with here, man. Sweet chili salmon fillet, crispy potato slices, epic mountain views. I tried to turn it over in a one but there's just no chance. It's just all collapsed. That skin is looking hella crispy though. There's no tidy way of doing this. I'm just gonna smash it on the plate. It's not one for presentation, far from, but it's certainly one for taste. Oh man. Crispy as well. And to go with, I've got some Heinz mayonnaise and some Nando's Perinaise. Yes, mate. That is gonna be banging. Now I reckon I can put that plate on there. And that's me sorted. Blather that in Perinaise. And we're on to an absolute winner. Winner, winner, salmon dinner. Although it's tea, not dinner. Right, I'm gonna scram this before that wind arrives. Whoa, nearly tipped the lock. Oh my days. 
trust me, everything tastes better out here. Everything. Mate, that salmon were bob on, telling you. While it's still light, let's get out and have a look about. Oh, the difference when you get out here. The wind seems to be pretty calm at the moment, which is good. Tent's looking good. What a tent. All my guy lines are nicely in. They won't be budging because it's probably going to freeze over. I put some rocks on these ones, just on peg. And then this one, because there's this wall, I can't really put it on ground. So I've just put the peg through sideways, put a rock on top, rock at the back, packed it in with snow. That should be fine. Can't see anyone being up Scarfell Pike at this time. We're only about 20 minutes off at sunset. Don't look like we're getting a sunset. Get me back in. Oh, that's better. Get these booties off. Get the down boots back on. Sorry, it's really dark there, isn't it? And they're not really down boots. The rab, but the synthetic. But they keep me nice and warm. Wow, tell me that doesn't look like a face in clouds with mouth open. It doesn't anymore. It did when I first looked at it. Well, here it is. The first wind gusts have arrived. I can hear bits of snow or sleet, which is shit, hitting top at tent. Right then, I suppose it's time to get this map blown up, see what it's like. One of the reasons why I agreed to test this is because it's by Flextail. They make the pump with the tent light that I always use and they make the pillow that I use as well. So I thought I'd give them benefit of doubt, see what it's like. They've just started making mats. So what I'll do is, oh, we've got a repair patch there. Hopefully we don't need it. So what I'll do is, after tonight's sleep, I'll let you know what I think of it, and I'll put some links in the description. So if you want to buy it, or you want to check it out, check in the description, it'll be there. But I certainly want to try it first before recommending it to you guys. What I can tell you straight away is, it's a lot wider than my firm arrest. Now I've already made a little error. Because I always use this rubber attachment point for my firmarest mat, I've not actually brought the other attachment points so it won't actually fit this mat, but we'll make it work. I'll just better push that on the end. It's bloody massive. So first things to tell you is it is absolutely massive. It's well wide. They do do a mummied version, which is smaller, which will probably be the same size as my firmarest. Comfort wise, seems all right to me. Obviously I'll know a lot better once I've had a couple nights sleep on it, but I'm probably the wrong guy to be testing this because I'll sleep anywhere, me. The main thing is, does it keep me warm? That's what's gonna be the good test for tonight. storm has arrived. So to ensure that I actually get a decent sleep with all that wind kicking off out there, I'm going to draw for the secret weapon. And that is my new headphones. They're just some cheap ones. I think they were like 50 squid, some JBL. I watched a few YouTube reviews to see what sort of best headphones I can get within that budget. And these are wireless and they've got a 72 hour battery. So I can't complain at that. So I'm going to whack these on tonight, put some on to watch to fall asleep to block out all that wind noise. Sorted. I 
I've decided I'm not even going to bother with those crispy potato slices for this second batch. I'm not hungry enough, but I'm going to make most of cooking this salmon fillet though. There we are, lovely little bit of salmon that. And no, it's not burnt, that's just the skin. Nice and crispy. Can't get over how nice that salmon was. I'm gonna wash it down with a bit of iron brew. Leftover from Scotland trip. Cheers. Not sure how well the GoPro will make it out, but it's finally snowing now. Looks like it's coming down quite heavy as well. So on the Met Office, Bow Fell is the closest mountain that it'll let me check. So it's saying heavy snow, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock and two o'clock. Two o'clock looks a bit sleety, but we've got 90%, 95%. So that's pretty decent. Temperature is staying a lot warmer than it did earlier. It's now at zero and then it's only going to drop to minus one. So that's not too bad. Wind gusts, 53 mile an hour, 56, 57. That's the highest, so that's not too bad. And then that drops right off down at eight o'clock in the morning to 32 mile an hour. And look at that, the sun's are blazing, it says. So hopefully we might get a sunrise if we see a sunrise from here. Visibility looks good. So hopefully with these wind gusts, because we're pitched a lot lower than the summit of Bofell, we shouldn't get half as much of that. Well, maybe half, but you know what I mean? We shouldn't get as much as that. Don't mind this in bottom, sorry. I'm just about to start watching a film. But anyway, it's 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna watch a film. Maybe get a little brew on. But these headphones are gonna be sick for just watching films and that in 10. Wireless as well. I just watched a video on YouTube and yeah, it's just sick to be able to block out all the exterior noise and just listen to the audio in full quality. Well, that'll do me, boss. Wow. I hate it when I do that. I fell asleep, man. Lights on. It's 20 past five. Sweating, man. Down jacket in this sleeping bag. It's quite warm for these temperatures. The wind has really calmed down. It didn't affect me falling asleep last night. But I am going to go back to sleep for an hour or so. I just thought I'd speak to you guys since I didn't even say goodbye when I was going to sleep. <laughs> I'll see you again in the morning. Peace out in a bit. What well, is the morning, but you know what I mean. I'll see you in a couple hours. Or an hour. Right, in a bit. And we're back. Well, that's more like it. It is seven o'clock now. So, extra hour or so in bed. Why not? I'm in no rush to move this morning, you know. Because I'm out for another night tonight in the Lake District, I'm not going back to my car. So I'm just going to do another hike today to another spot. I'm in no rush. I'm just going to chill out for a bit. My tent's well away from the path, so no one's going to walk past her all, so I'm not harming anyone. I'm going to get some breakfast on, get a brew on, just chill out. Right, then I suppose we best have a look out here. See what we're dealing with today so far. Well, you know what that is. You clag! <laughs> yeah, actually, Got a bit of blue sky there, and it's wisping about over there. So, all that is forecast to pass. Just a bit of early morning clag. So, we didn't really get a dump in the snow. Well, we, if we did, it's melted. We've got a bit of snow drift up at the side, but yeah, I think like it's melted more than it was when we got here yesterday bit of frost on the side there. Sky lines want budging. Yeah, that looks moody, that. How good does that look? With clouds moving like that. Yeah, so it did snow a bit because I remember this patch being clear because I put my rucksack on it when I first got to camp.
So my first night on the flex tail mat was a very good one, to be honest. Like I say, last night I fell asleep without planning to, and I was nice and toasty warm. Didn't feel any cold coming through the ground, but I have got the Z light underneath as a bit of a backup, and obviously that's going to add one or two extra on the R value. Temperatures last night got to, I think it was minus one with the coldest. And then now it's about freezing, it's about zero. But I'm not feeling any cold fruit ground, so it's not a bad bit of kit, to be honest. Now, obviously, you pay the price in the weight because I think this large one is about 680 grams, which is a little bit more than my firm rest, to be fair. And I think if you get the mummy one, it's about 520 grams, so that would be more of an option that I'd probably go for if I was buying it. And price-wise, they're about 110 quid. So that is pretty good, to be honest. And then I think the firmer rests, you're talking 180 to 210, depending on what size you get. Obviously, you're saving a bit of dough with this. You're compensating with the weight, but the R value is actually higher. 5.6 on this. So yeah, no complaints. Like I said, I probably won't be transitioning to this. I might use it from time to time, to be honest. But I just wanted to test it out for a couple of nights, just for you guys, really. Just to save you a bit of dough. So there will be links in the description to this mat. Porridge time. A little tip with the porridge. Once you've poured your boiling water inside the porridge tub, get your boiling pot, turn it upside down, put your porridge on top and then put the lid on top. Just keeps all the heat trapped in there, keeps that boiling water nice and hot. Let your porridge do its thing. Make sure you boil enough water to have a nice brew while you're waiting for that porridge. Lovely that. Look what's going on out here. Just in time, finishing my brekkie. Started opening up, blue skies. Ow, smack me bastard head on that then. Lethal. Oh, that's the worst part of the day. Letting that air mat down. One last look before I pack the scent away. Lovely little spot this. Nice and sheltered. A little bit claggy, but what can you do? We had good visibility yesterday, so no complaints from me. Right guys, I'm gonna pack this tent away and get the hell out of here. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you've liked it, smash that like button, drop a comment, let me know what you think. Make sure you've subscribed if you've not done already. Weekly videos every Monday at 7 p.m. If you want to support the channel that a little bit more, head on over to the Patreon. I'll put a link in the description and I'll pin it in the top comments. All right, thank you for watching. Peace out in a bit.